Good morning. Glad to see you here, or soon to be here. Glad it's Friday, although I cared a lot more whether or not it was Friday when I used to have a Monday through Friday 9 to 5 job. But it's still great it's Friday, and great to have you joining me here. So just on the off chance I haven't met you, I'm Sandy, a pastoral intern here at River Heights. And for these devotionals, I'm going to be looking at stories. I really enjoy stories. And the Bible is full of stories of all different kinds. And these stories just feel like home to me. They're ways God speaks to me, and they help me find my place in God's story. So I like reading these stories. I'm going to share some stories with you all. Uh, before we dive into a story today, i uh, just going to take one moment and enjoy practicing gratitude, celebrating the good things God does. So one thing I'm grateful for today is that I got to go to a different restaurant that I'd never tried before with a friend, and it turned out really good. Um, so that's something I'm grateful for. If there's something you're grateful for today, I'd love for you to po pop that in comments. Just like I said, as a way to remember the good things God does. And I'll be reading those after I finish making the video too. So today we're going to be looking at a story from Acts chapter 2. When we left off last week, the followers of Jesus had been in an unresolved waiting time. Jesus had told them to wait for the Holy Spirit and that they would be witnesses all over. And for many of us, the, today's story might actually be a familiar story, the Pentecost story. But the first disciples wouldn't have really had a clear understanding of the Holy Spirit yet. It's fun to imagine what they thought might have been about to happen or how they were expecting it to look when the Holy Spirit come, came. I mean, when God appeared to Moses at Sinai, it was like, crazy clouds and fire and no one could get near the mountain. It was pretty crazy. I don't know if that's what they were expecting. Maybe they didn't know what they were expecting. But we're going to try to read through a good portion of this story today. Uh, and this is, like I said, Pentecost, also known as Shavuot or Weeks, which is a harvest festival, uh, 50 days after Passover. So this would be about 50 days after Jesus' death and resurrection. And this festival was a time that commemorated the history of Israel. I have a link I'll post in the comments afterwards that has a little bit more information about the Pentecost festival, just in case you're curious. And as I'm reading, if you hear Messiah, just remember that was the Israel's expected delivery. That's what that term is. So let's get into the story. When the day of Pentecost came, they, the disciples, followers of Jesus, were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and, be and he began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language. And utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. This is pretty much the entire known world at the time. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked each other, what does this mean? Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Oh, sorry, miss, missed in there. People started making fun of them and saying they'd had too much wine and were drunk before Peter starts talking. That's when he decides it's time to, time to say something about this situation. Peter stood up, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain to you what this is. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. I mean, here it's 10, but then it was 9. <laughs> this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your 
Young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him because it, from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. And that's from Psalm 16, also referenced in Pete's sermon not too many weeks ago. Peter goes on, says, Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on the throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, he warned them. He pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day, which is really incredible church growth for one day. Just saying, it went from 120 to 3,000. That would be so hard to lead through. And I mean, even starting out, this story would be hard to know what to do with. Because if I picture this rushing wind and sounds and everyone talking in different languages, this sounds a little bit chaotic. And here it turned out the, the tongues were earthly tongues, languages people actually spoke, which I think is really cool, although it's definitely not the focus of the story. And there's other times when tongues are given and it doesn't seem to be any earthly language. However, the spirit wants to lead. You know, that seems to be something God does sometimes. And here that was part of Pentecost, but it's not the focus of the story. It was a tool that enabled Peter and the disciples to witness to more people and be able to communicate with all these people who probably didn't all speak the same language. I mean, certainly not as their first, their heart language. They wouldn't have spoken the same language, even if they knew Hebrew or Greek or one of the trade languages. But Peter goes into the situation and he looks back and he says he starts to see that this is part of God's plan and fit this together with the stories from the Old Testament and just fit it in and say, you know, this is what God's been planning for all of time and to explain this and help people see what was going on. And I just love the conviction he shares that death could not keep Jesus down, that there was nothing stronger than God's power evidence through Jesus' resurrection, that 
that is absolutely God victorious. And then I also appreciate that the people respond to this. Like, it's not just, oh, that's nice, and then they move on with their day. People are cut to the heart, it says. And they want to know, what do we do about this? It wasn't just something that they heard. They felt like it required them to respond in some way. And Peter just tells them, you know, turn around, get baptized, and receive forgiveness. And it's it's a simple thing, but it's still, that's still a great response when God is speaking to our hearts. It's say, yes, God, uh, not what I'm thinking, but what you're thinking, and I'm going to live for this, and I want the forgiveness you gave. <sighs> so those are just some thoughts on this story today. And I'm going to go ahead and pray for us. So Holy Spirit, come, come for each of us, each place that we are, and help us today to have a fresh sense of your presence with us, and help us also to have your power evidenced through us that other people see you moving and working through us. And pray that you make our hearts be responsive so that when you speak, we also respond and we also change the way we live in light of this incredible story that you have given to us and the victory that you have through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you for joining me for this story today. And I encourage you as you go through your day, just to keep reflecting on this story and see if there's a way God might be speaking to you specifically through it, or if there's a way that this is part of your story this week. See you again next week. Bye for now.